The Boston Celtics have finally clinched the overall seed in the NBA, having won their 60th game of the season for the first time in 14 years as a franchise. They sit 13 games up on the Milwaukee Bucks, who are second in the East, and have just six games left until their season really starts. In this video, I will talk about the Celtics game against the Oklahoma City Thunder and analyze what this all means for the Celtics going forward. So let's get right into it. Hello and welcome back to another Celtics post game report. Please follow me on social media at Your Celtics Source on Instagram and TikTok for daily scores, news, highlights, and more. Visit YourCelticsSource.com where you can get the Boston Celtics upcoming schedule, full game highlights to every Celtics game, and a page where you can contact me with your questions, comments, and concerns about the Boston Celtics or ideas to cover in my next post-game report. Let's start off with the game itself against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Countless times over the last couple of years, the Celtics have often taken teams lightly when guys were out. But this year, besides just a couple of times, the Celtics have worked hard to treat every game the same and not play down to opponent's level. While the Thunder were missing Shea Gilchrist Alexander and Jalen Williams, their two top players, they are still a formidable opponent and kept it neck and neck until the middle of the third. It was not until that second half of the third quarter that the Celtics showed exactly why they are the best team in the league. At first, it was OKC with all the momentum, but then the Celtics were able to score as well to at least keep the difference between them and the Thunder at a standstill. When the Celtics were finally able to get stops, the Thunder quickly fell behind and into the dust. All good teams are going to make runs at some point in the game. That's just the NBA. What makes the Celtics so good is that ability to stop the run. The work was all done through Kristaps Przingis. When OKC went to their zone defense, instead of freezing like the Celtics have done in the past, they hunted out mismatches and looked for open guys. Przingis went back to the way he started the season, destroying any mismatches, which made it impossible for the Thunder to switch or double team. This let guys like Derek White, Sam Hauser, Drew Holiday, and Al Holford to have wide open looks from behind the arc. My favorite play was when Jason Tatum lobbed the ball into the paint for Przingis. The Thunder defense quickly turned their attention to him, allowing him to make a touch pass out to Derek White to switch the three. Jalen Brown also had a great play when he drove into the paint only to make a pass over his head to Przingis for another wide open three. As long as the C's keep the other teams honest, making it hard for the other teams to figure out what they're going to do, they will be almost unguardable. The late game issues that the Celtics have experienced have been when they're too predictable and other teams know exactly what they're going to do. There were other takeaways from this game as well. Joe Mazzulla 
played a very likely playoff rotation of eight deep, playing only Al Horford, Sam Hauser, and Peyton Pritchard off the bench. I think this game, and maybe one other game, is the last time that the Celtics will play all five starters in a short bench rotation for the duration of the regular season. We'll probably only see three starters at most in any given game, with Jalen Brown taking some time off to rest his hand injury, which I will talk more about later. For now, I want to transition over to what 60 wins and clinching the overall seed in the NBA means for the Celtics going forward. There is a saying that you're officially a good team if you win 40 games before your 20th loss. But what about 60 wins before your 20th loss? Let alone the fact that the Celtics most likely won't even get to 20 losses. It's easy to say that none of this matters and that the Celtics season doesn't really start until April 20th when the first round of the playoffs begin. But I believe it's important to celebrate this achievement. First off, this is the first time that the Celtics have won 60 games since 2008, and we all know what happened at the end of that season. Second of all, they have clinched the overall seed for the duration of the playoffs, and with that home court advantage in every round. After a bad playoff record at home last season, the Celtics have worked hard to make TD Garden the hardest arena to play in and deserve the award of the championship running through Boston. The Celtics are also on pace for the fourth best net rating of all time, proving that they are a historically dominant team. They are not skipping any steps, treating every game the same. Tatum had a great quote saying that Last year's Celtics were too anxious to get back to the finals and did not take the right steps to make that happen. But hopefully this year is a different story, especially with the gap between the Celtics and the rest of the league growing by the day. It's now up to 13.5 games on the Milwaukee Bucks, who lost consecutive games to the two of the worst teams in the NBA, the Washington Wizards and the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm not even sure that the Bucks will get to 50 wins this season, but that obviously does not matter. They will most likely be the second seed in the Eastern Conference. Anyway, back to the Celtics, because this team is just spilling out good vibes all over the floor. Kristaps Przingis smiles whenever he's on the floor, pointing into the crowd. The cookies and cream connection between him and JB is out of this world. No one expected it to flow so smoothly. Everyone is happy, and that is the first step to winning a championship. Can you believe it? There's just five games to go with a chance to win the Eastern Conference by 15 games for the first time in NBA history. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. As much fun as it is, though, I do sadly want to take a dark turn because Jalen Brown's hand injury is a little concerning. I will talk about that in just a sec. Thank you so much for watching this post game report. Please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on full game highlights to every Celtics game, news, posts, and other moments from the journey to Banner 18, like I have mentioned before. Please also check out my City of Champions playlist to watch highlights from every major sports team in Boston. Now on to Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's hand injury is apparently not that bad because the doctors continue to let him play, but he keeps mentioning it in his post-game interviews. Like if it's bothering you, just sit out these last couple of games. But if it's not, why do you keep mentioning it? You don't want that attention around you, and neither do Celtics fans. The Celtics have been so lucky with injuries this season. Like, are you going to give some fan a heart attack with those sort of comments? Especially because it's your left hand? Without the threat of your left hand, JB won't be able to do the things that he does with his right hand. 
Like, just sit out and be ready for the playoffs in two weeks. Also, work on those free throws because those need to be much better going into the playoffs. Besides him, everyone else seems to be healthy. I don't want to jinx it, so I'll stop there and move on to the final topic of today's show. That is how the rest of the Eastern Conference is shaping up heading into the playoffs. I briefly talked about the Milwaukee Bucks situation, but the 76ers also look scary with Joel Embiid finally back. And as I have said countless times on this show, the Miami Heat are a formidable matchup, although I do believe the Celtics would sweep them if they played them in the first round. The Pacers have fallen off in the last month as well, and the Bulls and Hawks won't be a threat despite the two-game skid against the Hawks a week and a half ago. If I had to bet on the Celtics' championship path, assuming that the standings stay the same as they are now, I predict that the Miami Heat win the play-in and move on to play the Milwaukee Bucks, leaving the Pacers, Bulls, and Hawks, in which I believe the Pacers will come out of that mess. The Celtics will sweep the Pacers in the first round before going on to beat the New York Knicks in five who have just beaten the Orlando Magic. Then they move on to play either the Bucks or the 76ers in the Eastern Conference Final. Either way, the series ends in six and the Celtics beat the Nuggets in six, bringing home Banner 18. Hopefully it doesn't go to seven. This brings us to the end of this post-game report. Please like this video and leave a comment down below. I will actually be back this Sunday covering the Celtics game against the Sacramento Kings. Until then, go Celtics.